Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Live. Good morning or good evening, depending on which good part morning. of the world you are. <laughs> hello, Queens. Hello, Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> Do people like say hello king? Is that a thing? I think so. I think Probably it's a, I think it's less of a thing as hello queens, but it, you know, it's a thing. Hello okay. king is a thing. Uh yeah. how can you guys hear us over the Maybe music I have in the background? Okay. Just testing volume, making sure it's good. Cool. All clear. That's what I like to hear. Well, hi everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it is our monthly community live stream. Uh, I know a lot of you look forward to this and we look forward to it every month too. And thank you guys for joining us every month. We, we really appreciate it and we look forward to this every month. So of course, I know a lot of you look are looking forward to this one in particular because uh, Tomb Raider 4, The Last Revelation in particular, seems like a, a pretty big fan favorite. Uh, and so since it's a pretty long game, you know, we didn't want to cut it short. So of course, as you know, it, it's only going to be part one of our stream today and we're going to be streaming part two tomorrow. So to give you kind of just a quick rundown of our, our live stream festivities. So what we're going to be doing today is we have just a little bit of a quick chat today with, uh, Dallas, um, and I'll let him introduce himself in a minute. Um, he is our franchise executive producer. Uh, so we're going to do a quick uh, chat and Q&A with him. He's actually been lurking like every community stream. He does, I don't think he really <laughs> talks in this in the chat, but he's he's been watching, guys. He's been with you guys like every month. Uh, right, so when, you, when you say we're all fans of this, I'm like, I am a fan of this. I'm a lurking <laughs> secret fan of this. But I've, been, I've had him on, on my screen all, uh, all day, uh, each of the last three of these. So Yeah, so... So told him that he should he should come join us, and he was immediately like, "Yes, I would like to." So, so he's here today to join us. So we'll chat with him for a little bit, and then of course we will raid our first uh, community streamer of the day, and that will be Hetty. And you guys may remember him because he he streamed with us f before for Tomb Raider 2. Um, so it'll be him, and then we have um, Croft Generation TV, which will do the he he will be doing the Karnak levels. Um, and then that will be it for today. And then we will pick up again tomorrow at the same time. And Tomb of Ash will be doing the Alexandria levels. And then we will have um, Chris Nephilim. He's, he's streaming with us for the first time. And he'll be doing the Giza levels. And then we have, we'll be closing off the stream with the Cairo levels with uh, Constantine or Lady Croft CZ joining us for a second time. So that is kind of a schedule and rundown of the stream. Uh, and I've already been talking too much, so I'll let, <laughs> I'll let Dallas uh, introduce himself a little bit. Uh, you guys probably remember him from the community video, but Dallas, uh, take it away. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, you've already hit the most important point. I mean, so I'm Dallas uh, uh, Dickinson. I am the franchise executive producer. I think we're going to talk a little bit about what that actually means. Um, uh, but uh, I'm a huge fan of everything that's been going on, especially in this this uh, 25th year uh, celebration of, of Lara. As Neha mentioned, I've been lurking um, uh, in in all of the uh, in all the streams thus far, um, uh, and I'm just excited to be here. Um, you know, talk a little bit about uh, about the things that are going on. Um, Obviously, there's a lot we can't talk about. So, you know, the pre-apology that I'm sure uh, Neha and Megan have also given you as well. There's a lot of stuff I can't say today. Um, uh, but I'm just really, this is my first time to actually get to engage directly with you, uh, the fans. So I'm super psyched about it. <laughs> Heck yeah. We're super excited too. So, uh, yeah, like Dallas just said, there's a lot of stuff that's still we're keeping secret or we're keeping, you know, tight-lipped for now. So we apologize if we're not gonna answer very specific questions, but we thought there was still some merit in having Dallas talk about, you know, just kind of his role in general and, and, and approaches to things and so on. So let's start with uh, what, what exactly does a franchise executive producer do, Dallas? Because you don't really focus on only games. No, no, it's it. Um, uh, it, it is it is. Uh, I'll, st I'll still say it's still my primary focus, right? That's sort of you know, what I've been doing for my whole career is making uh, is making games, making big video games. Uh, but um, uh, here at uh, at Crystal, as the franchise executive producer for Tomb Raider, uh, it means I'm also kind of the uh, the pivot point for making sure that anything that we do in 
in addition to games, external projects. Uh, I guess I get to use the word transmedia. I love saying transmedia, but <laughs> um, uh, things that we do with books, things that we do with comics, things that we do with TV and film, um, uh, very, uh, merchandise, um, uh, apparel, all that kind of stuff. Um, that still needs to go through me because I'm meant to be the person who sort of coordinates with other experts um, here in the studio. I, I lean on Megan a lot um, uh, to make sure that we're doing things that are not only appropriate to the brand, uh, but they're also appropriate to what fans really want. Um, uh, and so so when you hear about, and I'm sure you know, folks are aware of, of some of the big projects that have been announced um, uh, that are outside of the game space, um, I get to review all the scripts and talk to the folks about like here are the guide rails, um, uh, here are the things that you can and can't do, and oh dear, dear lord, please don't have Lara do that. That's not okay. <laughs> so I do a good deal of that as well. Um, uh, but again, my primary focus still is uh, is on the games, um, uh, uh, both both the future games, but also when we when we for instance when we did the um, uh, the the rebundling of the uh, of the definitive Survivor trilogy, right? I was very much a part of that and making sure that we did that well, that we know that it was all sort of branded appropriately, but also that uh, that it really was a good idea, that it was a thing that uh, that uh, players were wanting to get. And so all of those things land on my desk in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, we got people in chat saying they want to steal your job, and it sounds like an amazing <laughs> job. It is a lot of work, but man, it's, it's pretty amazing to work on this franchise, isn't it? It, it, it is awesome, and and it really is. Uh, it's one of those things where each each time another one of these sort of things sort of landed on my plate, I was like, "Well, that's a lot, but but I want to do it. I, I want to get in mm -hmm. involved in it. Um, I, I love being in, in those in those conversations. Again, I don't uh, I don't delude myself into thinking that I actually have any sway on like you know on like what what Lara says, and, and again one of the uh, the TV shows or films or anything like that. But it's just cool to be in those conversations, right? And be like, oh, that's what you're thinking of doing. Uh, yeah, that actually does work, but you know, I get to I get to play at being uh, uh, being a you know a film guy too, which is great. Love that. Well, obviously, I think fans can tell that you're a big fan of the Tomb Raider games. So, do you just want to touch on your history with the games and what like your favorite aspects are of them and the character as a whole? For sure. Yeah. Um. I so I'm a puzzles guy. Um. Uh. uh so my my life in video games, um, but also just my life outside of video games is is I'm I'm that I'm the puzzle nerd, right? Um. Uh. There's a, sorry. This this is totally off topic, but like there was a magazine back when I was a kid called Games Magazine. Um. Uh. And it was sort of like puzzles and and all that sort of stuff like i was the weird dude who only played games ma played <laughs> game magazine all the time and so as video games started to get more and more interesting and complicated and involved puzzles that's what got me in um so uh so obviously first tomb raider like when it came out and someone's like oh you know what's going on here it is you know you're going through these tombs you're figuring out like how to traverse and get get through all this stuff like i was 100 percent in so uh the first four games I was hardcore about. Um, I have to admit, I did drift away for a while. Um, uh, as, as a fan, uh, I've, I've been uh, I've been sort of reacquainting myself with uh, with the ones after uh, after the first four. Um, but but the Survivor series actually got me way back in as well. And it is it's not just obviously the puzzles. Um, uh, you know, Lara Croft as icon. Um, she was a big deal back then, and she also, I guess. The, the resonance uh, for me um, as like as like this is a badass this is a badass character and I and I love seeing her uh, and how she interacts with the world um, like she she's also an icon uh, you know without going straight into the like I have a daughter and I have a daughter who I love I love the fact that there are these heroes that she can truly like look up to and uh, and be excited about and be excited about playing as and so both of those aspects are the thing that is uh, things that have always attracted me to uh, to the games. Um, uh, and and again, I just love playing again adventure games. Uh, uh, totally, like you know, exploration is is the other aspect of, of of the thing that I dig the most. Yeah, we have a couple of questions in chat. Just as a follow up from your role, people are asking just about your involvement when it comes to things like concept art and direction, more the visual aspect. Maybe you could just touch a bit on that versus what like art directors like Bren do. Yeah, so so uh, that is very much in Bren's space. Um, I get to be a voice in the room, but uh, you know, a, a lot of my job is, I guess, a lot of my job is knowing that I'm not the smartest person in the room about most of these things specifically. Uh, as I said, I, 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 lean, I lean on Megan uh, to to uh, to know a lot of the historical stuff, um, uh, a lot of the stuff that, as I said, you know, my my knowledge before I started at Crystal of uh, of 
uh, five through uh, five through eight as we as we number them was was actually pretty limited um uh i actually hadn't played the uh, uh the uh, lara croft games uh, temple of osiris and guardians of light uh, guardian of light and and so leaning on people for that so in the in the art space like Ren's the one who knows, right? Um, I am learning uh, from him so that I can be a sort of a first layer of defense. Um, uh, we, I try to keep things off his plate as much as possible. And so when concept art from external stuff comes to us, um, I at least now know the basics of like, that's not what Lara looks like. Uh, like, what are you doing with 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 her hair? That's the wrong. Uh, that's the wrong outfit. Um, but when we get into the details, I absolutely have to lean on on Bren and a couple of other folks to say like like there are very specific things about the way that Lara presents to the world. Um, uh, there, you know. Like her her mouth shape is a thing, right? Um, and we have to hit it every time, mm -hmm. no matter what no matter what form we're going with. Um, and so, even when we go into yeah. different styles, right? Because obviously we've done some uh, some pretty wildly different, uh, I guess, styles of representation, especially in in more sort of animated um, style stuff. We still need to hit all of those notes so that us, all of us, uh, you know, the fans can look at it and go, "Oh, that's Lara Croft." Yep, I know where I know what's going on here. So. I said, I'm I'm the first, but I'm probably the worst line of defense there, and then I pull in, pull in the extra. I think you're you're underselling yourself a little bit, but yeah, it is obviously a collaborative effort. But the, the passion and the knowledge across the whole team is is pretty exciting. So people have also been asking about uh, CSW Crystal Southwest announced yeah. yesterday, Wednesday. Announced I don't yesterday. Know, Wednesday yeah, announced yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I can't obviously go too much. Right. What can you than, say about that? Yeah, there's there's you know the the, the super simple blurb, and I'm not going to go too much deeper than that. But I, I will say it's a thing that's been in process for a while. Um, uh, uh, we we've, we've been uh, building up the team. I think a thing that we sort of reference there is we are seeding the the group here with lots and lots of uh, of crystal veterans, folks who have been working on Tomb Raider as well as other projects for for a number of years. So we want to make sure that we have that. Again, this is all corporate speak, but we want to have the the, the crystal DNA represented here um but then uh for those of you who are are, are not in game development um uh to, to know that like there are four or five big game development spaces uh, uh in the united states and obviously there are more more beyond that but uh but austin has always been one of those like top four top five um spaces so it's it's a it's a place where we're just going to be able to grab even more folks uh, and, and attract more talent um uh because uh, i guess the the uh, super vague way to say it is the things we're doing going forward are pretty damn big um uh and so being able to hire the best talent at our our uh, studio up in seattle um crystal northwest in our home base in Redwood City, um, but then also to have a, a third big base of operations here in Austin. It's like, that's the reasoning behind it. Um, and again, it's because we are building, we're building big things. We are, uh, we are growing in, in terms of, uh, in terms of our portfolio of games that we're working on. That's super exciting. All right. So Lara has been in a ton of crossovers and partnerships, especially this year, and we still have more to be announced. So, uh, you know, fans have asked before, how do you choose what to feature her in? And, you know, you and I are you and I are Fortnite fans, so like, why Fortnite specifically? Sure, yeah. I mean, so, so to the general question, um, uh, I, I think it's you know it, because we see it all. Um, uh, it, we we understand why we've we've sort of like chosen things and not chosen things. To be clear, there are tons of things that we that we reject outright. Um, uh, there are even some that we talk with uh, with potential partners about, like how they would how they would use Lara, how they would actually represent her, what what would be the actual way that she appears in their game or in again other uh, other uh, media formats and and it's up to us to say that actually doesn't fit um uh, it doesn't it doesn't fit with lara's character um it doesn't fit with the brand generally or and uh and you know this is a, a word that i'm going to say out loud and then again probably not give you as much as you want on it but it doesn't fit into our plan for unification going forward right um and so those are some of the the criterion that we use to kind of sort um the the fourth one and this kind of leads into your your second question there is like is this a high quality uh, um, a partner is this somebody that we want to be associated with and um, to be clear we want people to be excited about Lara Croft we want to in fact sometimes introduce her to uh, to players and uh, and you know even generations who aren't as uh, as in tune with her so there are people obviously in in our fan base who are 
who are my age um, and who have been with Lara for uh, for the entire journey, right? Um, uh, and so, so we want to make sure that we're that we're doing things that honor what uh, what those of us who were you know quote, classic fans. Um, I, I'm, I know people we use the terms differently, but I, I think of myself as a classic fan. Um, uh, but we know that there's also a, a huge new generation of fans who were brought in with the Survivor games, um, and we want to make sure that we're honoring them. But we also want to look to the next generation, right? Um, uh, and uh, you know, I referenced. Uh, I'm going to keep referencing my daughter. I apologize. Um, but like, like my daughter is the next generation, right? Um, uh, and we want to make sure that they're excited about uh, about Lara Croft, that they find her relevant, and they go, "Wait, who's that? That is a badass uh, heroic character, and I want to be her. Let me learn more about uh, about her. Let me play the next game or one of the previous games, etc." And so Fortnite, uh, you know. This may be a surprise to everybody, but it's one of the most popular games on the planet. Um, uh, there are there are hundreds of millions of people who are playing that, uh, and many of those players are aware of Lara Croft. They're aware of Tomb Raider. Some of them aren't, right? Um, uh, some some folks will be like, "Hey, who's that cool lady with the with the teal top? Um, I want to learn about her." Um, and so that's a, a little bit of of you know some of the the thoughts there. But truly, it is about making sure that that Lara is in pop culture mentality, right? Um, making sure that she is relevant across all of these different types of media um, so that when our next game comes out that uh, that there are more people who are like, oh, right, I, I know exactly who that is and I'm really excited to see her next adventure, her next journey. Yeah, and with Fortnite specifically, how amazing is it that Lara can run around with Aloy and can run around with Sarah Connor and right. Ellen Ripley and like, that just makes my heart pitter patter every time I see that, I'm well, yeah, amazing. And, and, and I, I know, I, so I know we talked about this, but but like like but we're, we've been putting together like these awesome like I guess we put it together some Lara Squad shots that that we share, but then we've seen this with fans as well, where they create like the badass woman wrecking crew, um, uh, yeah. and, and go and go through and just are just like that's awesome, right? Um, and getting to see her again beside all of these uh, these other uh, sort of great iconic characters, it's amazing. Not to mention, just doing a quick shout out. So uh, not everybody realizes how in depth creative mode is. And I've got it on my list to try this weekend. I saw someone promoting um, a, a, a yeah. classic, a Tomb Raider 1 uh, tribute Sion. that they made in in uh, Fortnite Creative. And so you get creative creator codes and you can go to their island and check it out. And I'm super excited. I've heard that it's great. So we can go run around as Lara in their custom Tomb Raider level using all these amazing Fortnite assets. So gotta check it out, gotta check yeah, it out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, we aren't the people who, cre who, are, who are creating metaverses right now, right? But it's awesome to see, uh, you know, there is a world, and maybe I'm asking fans to do this, um, like there's a world where people just start creating all of their favorite Lara levels in Fortnite creative yeah. mode. I'm a thousand percent in for that. Uh, like I want, I want to see what people can do, what they do. Like, uh, I, hopefully, folks who did play Fortnite did play the uh, the Manor, um, uh, because that was a that was a totally fun uh, experience, and it was the blending of uh, of sort of like Tomb Raider style um, uh, puzzling with like the crazy stuff that you can do in Fortnite. Um, I had a lot of trouble with the the sort of like grenade, uh, um, sort of propulsion grenade level. So Finally hard. got good at it. Oh, but but like it was like it, it actually gave me it gave me the same feeling that I got when I when I was first solving uh, some of the uh, the Tomb Raider puzzles where you're like, this is just impossible. Like there is no way to get this done. Like I can't understand there is. And when you finally get it done, it's like, yeah, like it was great. So so I'm really yeah. excited to see more of that. Awesome. All right. So again, we're going to keep this high level, but I do know that uh, people are interested in this really quick. Someone asked if this is a VHS player. It is. I'm digitizing old Tomb Raider tapes. Some mm -hmm. exciting stuff in there. Yeah. Um, so people are wondering, what is the process of unification and how is that going to work? We're going to keep this super high level, but if you just want to speak to the general philosophy a little bit more than we did in the initial video, that'd be great. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, uh, there are there are aspects, in fact, a huge amount of, of who Lara was um, in uh, in the original games. Um, that that I know fans and, and rightly sort of sort of said, hey, you, you've lost some of that. Some some of what made me so excited about about Lara Croft. Lara Croft was a damn superhero, right? Um, uh, and uh, and and people want to see that uh, again. Um, however, there's also a bunch of great things in the Survivor series um, that honestly grounded her more, uh, made her more accessible, made her more of a, of a real person, and so. 
Some of it is, uh, you know, it's very easy to say out loud, but it's actually hard to do, is making sure that we can that we can stitch together those Laras and make it so that they're both true, right? And this is all about honoring uh, the, the fans, honoring the, uh, the, the, the creators, the original creators, and saying like, yeah, those things about, about our various Laras, um, that's actually Lara. That that is it is all one thing. It does mean that we look a little bit at um uh, at, at even even little tiny niggling parts of uh, of backstory, and we want to make sure that we unify those. And so we need to actually, in some cases, choose and say, this is the this is actually what happened. Um, and and that that makes the through line uh more clear and more 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 uh on on brand of what we think is the best blend. But you know. The, the thing that we heard a lot during during Survivor um, uh, was, yeah, but yeah, is she the Tomb Raider yet, right? Um, uh, because people really want to see, like, she's overcoming the struggles, and that's part of what was really important about Survivor Series, right? We also got lots of people saying, like, I love to see Lara just keep moving, right? I'd love to see her say, like, I do not give up, and, and you have to have something you're struggling against in order to, be, in, in order to not give up. But what fans really want to see is, but now she's a badass. Now she is 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 confident in, in in all things, and so we're making sure that that we pull all those things together, and it kind of goes into what we do, even with uh, even with work outside of the games, right? Is that we want to make sure that anything that comes out from now on um, has those lines at least crossed that, that we that we talk about them um uh that we again and this is this is my role that when we talk with a partner we say all right how are we presenting lara um where exactly in lara's life timeline is this story or this uh or this piece taking place um and let's make sure it is aligned with that unified vision that, we, that we've now laid out in in our own side, you know, in in story beats um, uh, and other points that again we haven't yet shared with you. But but again, uh, that it, it is a, it is a process and it's hard. Um, uh, it does it does mean that we have to go really deep on who is Lara at any given point in her life, um, uh, and and how does that affect how she presents herself, um, uh, who she interacts with, etc. So we're doing all of that work. Um, you know, there is there is some cleanup of characters as well. Like we need to make sure that, that these characters make sense, uh, <laughs> the ones who recur, um, uh, and and that we understand truly what their what their storyline was um, in order to make them make them available again. So it's a big process. It's it's a big part of what we as sort of the the full on franchise leadership team works on together. Yeah, big process, something we take super seriously, you know, and, and that's why we're, we're taking our time with this moving forward. So a question, I know that we are we are okay clarifying this. People have asked, is the Weta statue the first step in unification? Because the, the video they released, there was a yeah. picture of Anniversary Laura and and Reboot Laura together used as reference. So Dallas, do you want to clarify that? Yeah, yeah, so, uh, uh, <laughs> so the answer is, Accidentally, yes. Um, uh, so not, not, it was not it was not our direction um, uh, to say you must unify her and and certainly uh, and certainly like we didn't actually have all of our points for like what does unification mean um, uh, before we worked with with them. But we did give them uh, to, uh, to Megan's uh, point like different points of reference to be like make the greatest version of this statue that you that you can. And by the way, it's it's freaking amazing, right? Um, uh, like that statue blows my mind every time I, I take a look at it and then I remember how big it is too and I'm like oh my god right um yeah, but I'm gonna put it my... <laughs> has right I know exactly it's it's the uh you know uh, I'm 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 trying <laughs> trying to make sure that we get uh that we get at least a, a you know one that I can put in the, the crystal southwest uh site so that it can be like a, a piece that people see uh, as, I got as you well. you got me thank you thank you Megan um but yeah I mean but yeah, I already I already got it allocated beautiful uh, but folks will notice, like you know, the pose and the and the, just the, and the scene, like she is in full on he he superhero mode there, right? This is Lara at the top of her game. She's fighting these ra raptors, like it is, it is all of those things that you love from uh, from classic Lara. But when you look at the at the model herself, right? Like that's a real grounded Lara. Uh, she has the scars. She has the dirt. She has uh, she has the like like all of that stuff um, actually happens to fit with the more survivor uh, survivor end. So uh, even though it was not intended to be like this is the announcement of the way the unification is going, uh, they did a great job um, and they are they are very much in the ballpark of what we're going for. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's I a mean, qualified. And it's worth yeah, yeah, like their product. We were talking about this almost two years ago so that's that's 
lead time on statues like this are extremely long. So just to clarify, that's a, you know, that's why they had a little bit more creative freedom there before we honed in on things. So it's not that official point of unification, but you know, I feel like it looks the pretty first, good. I feel like the first version of it I saw that was again, again, it was just in in their in their modeling. Like that may have been a year, more. It's more than a year ago. It was it was yeah. like. It was like February of last year or something like that when when I first saw it in my inbox like this is what we're thinking of and so it, like and they're still in production right so it, it is a it is a big endeavor for them to to make those because they're so detailed yeah and so in terms of merchandise in general like you know we've talked to the fans about how some merch was delayed due to COVID and stuff like that like manufacturing is an issue but there's also considerations when it comes to unification too right so like what are your guys's considerations when it comes to merchandise moving forward and how you approach that see like unification touches everything right yeah and it, it really I mean it, it it has much more to do with with the very Lara specific pieces. So when we talk about statues, when we talk about toys that are actually that are actually representations of her, um, we want to make sure that those are the ones that that land appropriately in unification. I will say that uh, that you know we do have one product that's coming out this year, uh, a game. Um, uh, so everybody is, is is hopefully aware that there is a uh, a mobile game that is in process right now. Um, uh, it is in soft launch, I believe in. Singapore is is my is is, is a, I think so yeah I'm pretty, pretty sure of that right um but it's it's going to be coming out pretty soon um and uh there there is that's that's a space because it's a very specific um uh it's a product it's a look and all that sort of stuff where uh, where we might have some some merch that that goes at in that vein um uh but in terms of mainline Tomb Raider we're probably going to be holding off on the uh, on the Lara specific stuff um until we truly have like our our, our milestones and our benchmarks set. Um, that doesn't mean that uh, again. There's other. Uh, the, we, we call it ancillaries or, 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 or merchandise. There are other things that that are in process, but they're things that stay away from exactly how we represent Lara because that's the place where unification is most important to us, right? We want we want it to be a thing when people go, "Whoa, that's unified Lara." I see, right? Um, uh, and so that's that's the one that's going to take a little while. Yeah totally understand and people are also wondering what is the relationship with Netflix and MGM like so how much creative say do you have there and are those projects that we're trying to fit within you know figuring out where they fit in that timeline and, and so on we are absolutely um uh it, it you know the the relationship these are super positive and great collaborative relationships that we have with uh with the folks at uh Netflix and Legendary uh pictures are the ones who are working on the uh who are working on the animated series um uh and then uh MGM is obviously uh working on the uh the next film uh, with uh, with Alicia Vikander um like uh you know I, I guess my perception because they they like to be nice to me is that i'm a super big part of uh, of uh, helping them uh direct direct what they're doing um uh, I, I try also to not stop them from being super creative it's what they do right um and so really my job is to uh is to provide uh guide rails um uh and to say like it would be weird if you uh put Lara across the universe, uh, you know, uh, riding spaceships all day. Like that's maybe a that's maybe a crazy idea. So let's let's not do that. Um, uh, uh, you know, hopefully they wouldn't propose that particular yeah. one. Um, uh, but like, there are there are pieces of canon. Um, and then I guess maybe to your further point there, Megan. Like there are pieces of our reestablishing and clarifying and unifying of canon uh, that we are that we are making sure that they are very clear on to say like these are things that in our unified view of Lara, they need to be there um, uh, and they need to make their they need to make a physical appearance, but they also just need to make sort of the character appearance uh, as well mm -hmm. as as well as her references and so so they absolutely are part are a part of that so the guidelines that we've uh, that we've uh, worked with um uh, our friends at, at uh, uh legendary netflix on like they are they are things that we know help us not just it's not just that we've cordoned them off to say only play in this space it is to say and what you do in this space actually helps us in making clear the unification path and so that's uh, that is that's how we work with them um uh we also want to give them creative uh creative license because that's how you get the best stuff out of uh, uh out of creators um, uh, and especially writers of tv and film right we need to let them go a little crazy and 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 you know nine times out of ten we're like that's crazy but I think that can work. Um, uh, I yeah. think that I, I think that actually, and in some cases, we actually are taking some notes, uh, even from from what they're doing, to go. Oh, we can use that. We can use that and leverage it in in sort of our overall unification story. So there's a really nice back and forth that goes on there too. Heck yeah! 
All right, so we're going to wrap up because we want to make sure that we get to streaming. Um, and so just a last kind of question. So what can fans expect in terms of like the horizon for Tomb Raider while the team is hard at work laying a foundation for the unified franchise? Obviously, again, we're not going to get into super specifics, but just from a high level view. Yeah, so uh, as, I, as I mentioned, so there is uh, the Tomb Raider Reloaded um, is, is coming out in the very, very near future. Um, uh, um, so that's the, the, the mobile title. Um, it is very much uh, sort of like run and gun, uh, run and gun action throwback kind of game. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, the uh, the progress that we're making on uh, on both the uh, the animated series and the film are, are pretty actually they're 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 rapid. Um, I think everything in the world slowed down a little bit because of uh, because of the pandemic in the last year. Um, but uh, uh, the folks in the folks in Hollywood are are really getting they got their stuff together. I think much more quickly than some of us. Um, uh, so that stuff is going to be coming on uh, pretty darn quickly. And and as I said. Beyond that, um, I, I don't want to make any promises of, of timelines. Um, uh, I, I am excited about what we're doing on the uh, on the game with the capital G front, um, uh, uh, but but that's the sort of stuff that we will be we'll be saving until we have uh, until we have the appro the appropriate level of uh, of progress. Um, uh, I'm a fan of uh, of showing off things that are that are a little bit earlier, um, uh, but we need to work through our. Uh, you know, our overall communications plan. Again, this is very, very corporate sounding, but like we want to make sure that we don't show something way too early um, uh, because that also, I think, uh, sets people up for like, right, but is it done now? But is it done now? Um, games are... It, Games are really complicated, and folks, you probably all know. You probably all know that. Um, uh, but we can make something that looks like almost shippable really fast, and it is not. Um, uh, and it is a it is a thing, and people can look at it, and we go, well, "That's the flavor of, that's the feel of what this game is going to be." And it's very easy outside of the walls to go, "Well, that looks like it's almost done. Like, why the hell don't I have it in my hands yet?" And so we have to we have to walk that line. Um, uh, so. So beyond beyond this year, um, uh, obviously we have all of these other great things for the for the 25th anniversary celebration. Um, uh, 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 well, um, there is a certain book by a certain author um, uh, uh, as well that's coming out later this year. I forget what the date is, uh, Megan. Is it? It's, it's actually in October on the on October 25th. On oh that date. I wonder why they chose that date. Um, uh, that's amazing. Uh, so yes, that is that is the date. Uh, so uh, so look for that as well. Um, and so th there are probably going to be some other things that that uh, that crop up in uh, in other forms of transmedia. But again, I can't speak to the specifics of uh, of what forms those are going to be. So uh, again, I apologize for for vaguing at you or vague booking or whatever the term is these days. Um, uh, but but later this year, um, hopefully, some more of those things are going to be beats that we announce uh, during part of this 25th year uh, celebration. Yeah, there's, I mean, Lara's not going anywhere, right? Like, with all the stuff that we're doing across mediums and entertainment, like... Yeah, I, I mean, it's that, our that, job, she's right? She's getting bigger and bigger. It's our job to do that, really, is is to make sure that she is not just in the general public uh, consciousness, but but that she, like, she, she remains in that, like, she's a pop culture icon, right? And that status is something that we have to make sure that we are investing in uh, and making sure that not only are our current fans served, but as I mentioned before with the Fortnite example specifically, that other that other folks are like, oh, right, I've heard of Lara Croft, I've heard of Tomb Raider, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn more about that, and, and we need to give, give those folks a way, an entry point into uh, into the world of Tomb Raider. Amazing. All right. So Neha knows what you guys want to see. Yeah. Right. Before, before Neha's gonna give you a nice teaser. Yeah. So before I uh, raid Hetty and turn you guys over so that we start the stream, there is of course the reimagined box art that we like to tease for our our stream every month. So I don't think Dallas has even seen this yet. So Dallas, you may want to turn our stream oh, no, on. No, no, I don't think I have. I, I was I was actually thinking of the of the of the uh, Tomb Raider free art. And I was like, yeah, no. So Dallas, awesome. you probably want to turn our stream on on your browser so you can actually see it because you won't be able to see it on Discord. So I'll oh, give you God. a second right. to turn it on while yep. I, I I say something. Yeah. So, so as you guys know, context, next next quickly. month, yeah, next month is for Tomb Raider Tomb Raider Five Tomb Raider Chron Chronicles is next month. Uh, so. Megan, you can give a little bit of background. I, I don't think you want to reveal who the artist is, but you, you can, no. you can, I'll let yeah, you I just wanna, speak to a little bit before. I just want to say this is one of my favorite artists, which I'm probably going to say that about everyone because I helped choose the artists, which is like an amazing part of my job. Right. Um, but this is one of my favorite artists and just putting it out there. It is 
nothing like the original box art because we gave everybody as much creative freedom as they wanted and we decided that because this one has so many different stories in it we kind of wanted them to go a montage route and it's phenomenal and beautiful and i can't wait for you guys to see it but remember like yeah, we give people think... the creative freedom to go where they want with things so yeah i'm glad i'm glad megan mentioned it. that because i think one thing that we see on social a lot is people like to compare the original box art and the new one and like while we do call it a reimagined box art series i think what's nice about like you know it's it's 2021 and like things have come such a long way not just in game graphics but just like where artists have gone and and like their creative freedom and where they've taken like art direction and stuff like that so this isn't meant to be just like a very simple like this is the box art an artist doing it over again it, sh like Megan like she said she's really told the artists uh same with our art director to really kind of take their freedom with these things so this one in particular is like very different but it's really really cool so uh we'll I'll stop talking about it and I'll, I'll show I'll pull up the teaser of it right now so excited so excited so excited so this is a a teaser of the of the chronicles reimagined box art wow and uh uh megan is is it do you think we'll be posting it next week maybe next week yeah oh yeah yeah i'll try to um oh, they're gonna deliver it this weekend and hopefully we'll have it ready to go and share on tuesday uh but this is this is styled after one of my favorite art movements it's a, a an artist who loves art nouveau and does pop all pop culture stuff in art nouveau and it's phenomenal we gave we give all of our artists uh, Neha puts together these really cool comprehensive like powerpoints that explain all the plot points and all that kind of stuff in case they're not as familiar with tomb raider and this person put in so many easter eggs and stuff we did not even tell them about yeah. because they yeah. <laughs> are such a huge fan so it is see you guys phenomenal. will love all the little like details of the game itself in the piece uh and since like you know most of you in chat are just mega fans you'll you'll appreciate that so i'll pull this off it, it's <laughs> but uh take one nice good look at it again i'm sure all of you have already screenshot it and it's on twitter so you know there's that we'll have like really bizarre <laughs> frozen faces and then it'll go all over i it's love how it's my head <laughs> <laughs> it's on the screen the, the art is my head but yeah so that is the um the teaser of the chronicles reimagined art and it hopefully will be releasing next next week um so yeah thank you guys uh so much for joining us again thank you dallas for, for sure. joining us thank uh you, thank, was, you, thank you dallas i think fans loved hearing from you so it was it was it was cool um, so I think we are getting ready to raid our first community streamer of the day. Uh, so of course, uh, we will raid Hetty and he will take us into Cambodia first for some young Lara adventures. So I will, I will raid him first and we will see you guys throughout the day. So thank you so much for joining us and, uh, ready for some Tomb Raider 4 adventures. Let's do it. Let's, Let's raid. It. Amazing. I'm I am excited. lurking already. Yeah, Dallas will just be paying half paying attention to meetings all day exactly. and watching this. So you can just periodically <laughs> say hi to him. I need to learn how to be an archaeologist <laughs> again, right? And I need I need Von Croy to teach me how to yeah. jump. Because that's the, the, the top skill that archaeologists need. How to jump. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so we've got like a hundred and seventy people. We got Ooh, I need to rate. Oh, I'm logged yeah. in as Crystal. I need Actually, to log in. I'm gonna account. pull in my own account on my laptop so that I make sure it's it's ready to go but yeah and make sure right, I, I, like i said ready to go so excited <laughs> so like i said before um of course uh, we will be we will be back tomorrow also but i think um i think i'll probably just quickly start the stream and, and raid ash tomorrow so he will be picking up with the alexandria level so Make sure if you don't, if you know, if you can't watch all of today, you tune in tomorrow as well. So yeah, I'm going to raid Hetty now. Again, thank you guys so much. Uh, you will see Megan and I around in chat and on voice with the streamers today. So we will see you guys around. Bye. And thank you, Dallas. Bye. Bye, Thanks, everyone. All. See you. Dallas is like, yeet. <laughs> Gone. That was super fun. He's did such a great job. All right, I'm going to
pop off voice so I can join Hetty whenever he's ready. I will All see right, you great. around. Awesome job. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.